welcome to another episode of Crochet Moments. I am Helen and this is my place where I like to talk about all things yarn. I can't remember what episode number I'm on. Let me just check in my notebook. Oh, I'm trying to be organised and keep notes. Episode 18. So, <laughs> welcome to episode 18. If you're new here, um, welcome. <laughs> jo join the madness that is me. And, uh, and your kids. And my children, who are just the other side of the living room, so they do occasionally interrupt, and they do occasionally like to join in. So I and do occasionally like to interrupt and listen. Yes. Out. Yes. Listen out. Which sometimes means this this <laughs> this podcast does tend to run a little bit long. Also, I do like to ramble. Um. So for that purpose. In the description box below, you will see timestamps for all of the things that I talk about. So if you're only really watching it to see a certain item or a certain thing, anything, particular part, just head down there and that will tell you where to go. So I think that's my introduction. Oh, I live in Leicester with my husband and my two girls. <laughs> um, Yes, and I started this channel with an eye to making more yarny friends and I'm pleased to say I have made a few and all of your comments, um, all of your likes really do make a difference um, to me and my channel so a huge thank you to um, those who always comment and um, to those, I have a couple who we do private messaging and backwards and forwards emails and things so if you do want to get in touch feel free um, all my contact details are down below in the description box you can find me on Instagram I'm at crochet moments and I am on Ravelry Helen Brown crochet Although I have to confess I don't use Ravelry as much as I used to <laughs> The list of projects I want to do keeps getting longer every time I go on there. So I try to limit how much time I spend on there. Which means I should stop Instagram really because I keep seeing stuff I want to buy. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, first of all, I want to um, just quickly mention my make-along that I've got coming up on 1st of May, which is what? A week and a half two weeks away now I forget <laughs> but um, on the 1st of May my four month make blanket along will be starting and this is where I invite all of you to join in and make a blanket there are a few of us that are making this blanket here the Starcraft life special boho blanket which is designed by Lucia Dunn who is one of um, Starcraft's blog stars. I am making this out of yar um, stash yarn. I've already shopped my stash and got a list of the colours that I need for payday for a visit to the yarn shop and also part of my visit to the yarn shop will be my prize um, purchases. I plan on doing two prizes I was only starting with one I've decided two and I'll see how many people take part as to whether or not I add a third um, yes yeah, so how do you take part all you need to do is share your progress pictures your finished object pictures on Instagram with the hashtag crochet moments bow that's crochet moments B A L um, that's all you need to do to make your um, picture public in that hashtag. So I am following that hashtag so I can keep a track of all of you who are taking part. If you don't have Instagram and, and would prefer but do want to take part, you can directly email me your works in progress pictures and your um, finished object pictures to the email below which is helenbrown791 at googlemail.co.uk or is it .com? I always get confused on that but it will be down in the description box whichever one it is so feel free to email me those pictures and I look forward to seeing all of those pictures on Instagram and in my inbox and I will draw 
at least two winners now <laughs> at random from um, all of those and hopefully we can get some lovely winners. Uh, just to let you know that, that this is open worldwide, I don't mind shipping internationally, just be aware that if there are any charges your end on receiving that um, you would be liable for those. But the prizes won't be very expensive, um, high value, so I don't think you would get char customs charges. I know in the UK it's about £30 is the cut off for customs charges. I'm not sure for other countries <laughs> anyway so that is um, a bit of admin out of the way I've been a busy girl the last couple of weeks I have got one two three four finished objects four <laughs> and only one of them was no two of them were in existence in my last podcast so it's quite exciting <laughs> um so I will crack straight on with those. So the first finished object I have, I actually can't remember the pattern. So I will pop it somewhere around the screen. Uh, this is my chevron scarf, which is a pattern from one of my Crochet Now magazines. And I use King Cole Drifter for this one. And I'm not 100% certain of the colourway because this was a ball in my stash that didn't have its ball band so I couldn't tell you honestly what yarn it is but it's really nice yarn I love this yarn um, if you have seen my um, apologies if you heard that beeping that was the washing machine finishing its cycle <laughs> um, yes yeah, so what was I saying? Oh yes, if you have seen my vlog that I posted of our day trip to Belton House, you'll notice the scarf that I'm wearing. It's a triangle scarf. It's actually the Adore Shawl, um, designed by Tony Lipsy of TLYC, uh, TLC, TL Yarn <laughs> um, Crafts Shears on in YouTube. She has a YouTube channel and that yarn is also King Cole Drifter, which oh, is just so nice. It's cotton acrylic mix and it's got the most beautiful drape to it. And I love this. It's, it's really light, so it would make for a lovely summer sort of scarf. I don't know if maybe I could have made it a little bit wider, but then that would have made it a little bit shorter. I'm just going to pause because Simon has come down to get Kath Emily. Okay, so that's the um, littlest one off to bed. So, <laughs> um, I can Good sh ribbons with her. Oh, if only the eldest one could go to bed too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my other three finishes are all amigurumi finishes. Uh, we'll start with the one that you have seen. The sewing together did not go well. But here is Delilah. There she is. Why, 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 Delilah? <laughs> Don't sing that song. <laughs> we have to pay royalties to Tom Jones if you sing that song. <laughs> yeah, we, we do. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so this is... <laughs> I'm not going to say her name because that will make Catherine start singing again. <laughs> So this is the dinosaur that I made. It's this Layla. This was out of a Crochet Now magazine. I used a ball of Aldi um, striped striping yarn for um, this one. So I just crocheted it as it came out of the ball, which is why she has two different coloured horns. Cool, yeah. And slightly dodgy looking coloured legs but I think she looks lovely I have however sewn her head on a little bit low so she's got a really strange profile um, I should have sewn it up here somewhere I think but not bad effort 
not a bad effort. I'm learning, I'm learning. And I will um, show you my amigurumi plans towards the end of my whips. So there's that one. And then I decided to make something for Catherine. It's for me. And here is... Ugly duckling. The ugly duckling. Now you might say, but that's not the ugly duckling. That's the swan. Well, what? all you need to do is like this. So this is a topsy-turvy stuffed toy. So you cro I crocheted the bodies of each one separately and then crocheted them together the bottom with just the one set of feet um, again I have put the pattern away so I can't tell you who made it um, who designed this I will again have to put it up somewhere around there so we just need to stuff the swan in there and then we have the ugly duckling. Isn't he cute? I do wish I had used a slightly brighter yellow. Um, I didn't realise I had one in my stash until I made my last finished object, which is Zico the Toucan. Now I definitely messed up Zico. Zico's face is supposed to be here. I somehow managed to sew him. So he's sort of looking like this. So, hello. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> yes. So this pattern is in the Zoomy Groomy book Zoomy one. Groomy. And I actually, I might as well tell you all about my Zoomy Gurumi plans now. So, so I treated myself to this. I bought it from Amazon. So I think it only cost about seven or eight pounds. Not not expensive. Definitely not the RRP. So I have seen quite a few projects being made out of the Zoomy Gurumi books, and I love them. I really, really love the look of them. So I've decided, I'm going to challenge myself to make everything in this book and then I'm going to work my way through one by one all of the other Zumi Gurumi books. I don't know if that's a mad idea or not, but I really enjoy Amigurumi. I'm really rubbish at it. But I really enjoy it. So I figure the more I practice, the better I'm going to get. So why not? <laughs> a lot of them don't take much yarn. So a lot of these will be using stash. Just the odd oddments left over from projects. Um, so like all of these have come out of my odd ball box. So this was in my oddball box. I had, this is some of the grey left over from Emily's jumper. And same with the white that's left over from her jumper. This colour here is this yellow here from my sheepies cow. And the same with the black that's just odd balls of yarn that I've had in my stash. So that's what I'm doing. So that will actually take me neatly onto the whip that I'm working on from this book. So let's show you what Zico should look like. Um, oh crack, I need to try and work out how I'm going to do this without showing off any pattern. Ugh. Let's, there we go, so if we, Let's do that. Ooh, like, ah. Go. Not. Let's, I didn't want to fold this back. But I'm going to have to. <laughs> this camera is too good. I don't want to. There we go. So there is Zico the Toucan. And he is lovely. And my effort for him 
leaves a lot <laughs> leaves a lot to me decide the actual crocheting part of it i'm quite well apart from the fact that i've carried the yellow and you can see it poking through so the next project in here is wasabi the bunny here he is wasabi the bunny and he is going to be made out of this yarn here which is a yarn that came from my mum's stash and I've malted in it <laughs> it's got bits in it it's quite it's a very old ball of yarn um, I don't know if it's really picking up the green on there it's really hard to tell but um, it's got this lovely mint green running through it and so this is how much I've got done <laughs> of wasabi there he is Ooh. this is the tippy top of his head so i will enjoy working on him the next time amigurumi comes up on my decision wheel so if you're not a regular viewer of my channel i decide every morning what that day's project is going to be to work on by using a decision wheel it's just a standard decision wheel app you can find a gazillion of them for free through the various app marketplaces and in the morning i just spin and it tells me what i'm working on and today's project is another whip that i've been working on in, since you last saw me and this is my changing staircases this is a dragon horde yarn pattern and I really wish that she was a UK dyer because her yarns that she shares on Instagram are beautiful. But I shall just have to make do with some of the patterns. These, I, This is the third Dragon Horde pattern that I have. There's this one. This one's a free pattern. I have the Summer Court Tank pattern, which is a paid for pattern and i have the le harbour sweater pattern which i haven't started yet it's it's sitting in time out at the moment because i can't decide what yarn to use it does take quite a lot so my it's in time now. Yeah. so my initial plan to use hand dyed yarn has sort of had to be got rid of so i need to have a play and think about what other yarns I can use that will still make it look as nice but a little bit more budget friendly because I don't want to spend £60 plus on making a jumper <laughs> for myself. I'd be too afraid to wear it especially with a four-year-old well almost five-year-old running around the house with pens and she's got a spilling habit. Anyway see what I mean about rambling. <laughs> Anyway, back on to um, my project, which is changing staircases. So here is not a great printout pattern of it. But, um, let's see if I can... This one's slightly better picture, actually. Let's just fold it down a little bit. So, so there it is. So that is what it will look like when it is finished and blocked. I am going to have to block this one. I'm doing really, really well. It's getting longer and longer, and the rows are taking longer and longer. So, um, well, that's the. So, there we go. So, here it is my changing staircases. It's a 20 row repeat. But it's an easy 20 row repeat, very, very easy. And once it's blocked, these will be slightly pointier at the moment. They just look slightly scalloped and scruffy. So I'm getting really, I'm getting there. The, the, the rows are getting longer. So it's taking longer to get through a, a repeat. And hopefully 
I'll get a couple of repeats done tonight because I, I think I'm only about 60 rows from the end so we shall see maybe th three or four more days working on this and it will be a finished object so the yarn I'm using is my birthday yarn this was my birthday cast on and I am using the Woolly Mama yarns in the colour Blueberry Jam and it's a four ply fingering weight yarn and it looks beautiful wound up I just love this colour and uh, it was Catherine that chose this one and she chose well it's so beautiful I love it <laughs> I just love how there's all sorts of elements of colors in there there's a few little bit of pink there's blue it's it's just and I can't wait to wear it it's going to be lovely to wear there we go beautiful and it suits me that color even with my brightly colored stripes so that is my changing staircase shawl. So I will pop that over there, ready to be worked on. So which whip shall I show next? Let's go for the two on the floor. So the next whip is my Alpost sweater. Get the picture out so you can see what it looks like. So here it is, the Alpost pullover. I keep calling it sweater, but it's the Alpost pullover. And I am knitting it in the where's the ball band gone? My Aldi So Crafty Aaron in Forest Green. And this comes in a 400 gram ball, which has about 800 meters in it. 75% acrylic, 25% wool. And it's it's just the softest yarn. I bought some um, more in the last sale and I have enough to make Simon a sweater. So he'll get a sweater soon, hopefully. We'll see. <laughs> um, so that's the yarn. And I have a finished sleeve. Thank you. goodness. Here it is. So now it looks kind of kooky. <laughs> so here's my sleeve. Oh, you can see the hole there. I've, Holy I've, moly. I really need to work on that um, going forward in future sweaters that are knit in this manner. But I've done an I-cord bind off, which was much neater than my first one which was in the neckline and I have to say I really like doing the eye cord so here's the cable which took what felt like forever to do um, I was quite relieved as um, because even though I swatched for this the panel the cable panel was coming up really really big and I don't know if I just lost my tension a little bit as I progressed through it. But um, I, I stopped after fewer repeats than I should have done. So everything else has had to be winging it, which for a novice knitter is, has been a little bit tricky. So um, I'm working on DPNs. Now one thing I would like to say about these DPNs and I don't know if it's obvious on this one. So these are the um, Knit Pro Carbons. I bought them because I'd seen them and I wondered what they were like. They were quite expensive. It was £11 for a set of DPNs. Um, these are 5mm ones. They are very lightweight. But one thing I am concerned about is I don't know if you'll be able to see... But the number, the sizing, the printing for the size is already starting to wear off. And I've only done one sleeve. So if I 
use them a lot and I'm not sure how many projects I'm going to need five millimeter DPNs for but if I use them a lot then I can see it wearing off quite easily I'm not sure why the sizes here are not here <laughs> and I have had that issue with um, the symphony crochet hooks Simon bought me some for my birthday a few years ago when I was newly into crochet and they those have also worn off I have to use my um, I have a little needle size thingy magic. I forget the name of the gadget. So every time I use it, I have to slot it in the holes to find out which size it is before I can say, oh yes, I can use that. But anyway, so the next thing is a new start. So when the chevron scarf was finished, I spun my new start wheel. I have a whip wheel and a new start wheel. So my new start wheel, has been populated with I think seven or eight projects that I already have the yarn for um, and I'll just spin the wheel when I have a finish to find out what I'm working on next and the project that came up next is the cover pattern from Simply Crochet issue 103 and I absolutely I'm really enjoying making this so this is designed by Fran Morgan and here is a slightly better picture of it. I'm not doing it in these colours and um, the stars were supposed to be done in Rico Design Creative Lame 4 ply. I didn't have any of that. Um, I'm just, I just used DK but used a smaller hook. And so far, it doesn't seem to have made that much difference to the pattern. I'm making this for Catherine in Catherine's size. And I've put quite a few stitch markers in to help me keep a track of how many stitches I've worked. But here it is so far. So I've done the motifs and now I've I'm working the body of the sweater and then when the body's done I'll be doing the yoke and the sleeves. But I'm really loving this. I'm almost wishing that I had chosen to make it for myself because this is really nice. Really, really, really nice. But uh, I unfortunately am one of those people that don't always make things more than once. Once I've made something, I want to make something new that I haven't made before. I'm always looking for the next new challenge. So um, this is the Star Bright Sweater and I am using, oh, there's one of my hooks. So this one is um, a pushing hook from my Crochet Now magazine, a three and a half millimeter. I quite I, I quite like crochet hooks with these handles these polymer resin handles they're really nice to use what's the other one so I'm also using my crochet society 3.25 so they're lovely the yarn is Aldi so crafty where's the pull band for that Okay, and I believe this is Colour Crafter. This was stash yarn because I didn't actually need a whole lot of this colour. So I think this is Colour Crafter um, left over from one of my cows. Yes, <laughs> I believe it is. And then the So Crafty in grey. So this is a darker grey than I used for Emily's jumper. But again, it's this is so nice. For such, for such a cheap DK, acrylic DK, this feels really nice. And it does work up really well. 
to most patterns. I wouldn't say it works for every pattern, but it definitely works for most. Okay, so there's that whip, and I am keeping it in my new way crochet project bag from LD2, which I love. And they were actually starting to sell them at a reduced price now. So, oh, that reminds me, I did buy, I did buy one of their other bags. I should just pause the video because I'm getting a bit dry and need a drink and I'll go and have a look for that bag. So see you in a sec. And I'm back. Um, so yes, I've just got a couple more whips and then a little bit of incoming. And if I don't ramble on too much, that might mean I'll get to keep this episode below an hour. I keep trying. So this is my summer court tank which is really coming on really really well now i'm almost at the end of the lace i've got a couple of rows left of the lace so where's the picture gone ah, there it is so there's the summer court tank now it is designed to have beads worked in amongst this lace but i decided against trying to do that because I'm still quite a novice at knitting lace. So I wanted to keep things as simple as possible. But I would definitely look for a tutorial or something because I do want to look at putting beads into my knitting as well. So here it is. It's coming along really nicely. It's definitely going to need a blocking. There we are. So you can see the lace coming through. And I was worried that it wouldn't be terribly visible in amongst the really wacky colour changes of the yarn. But I think it's coming through really nicely. And I've still got quite a fair bit of this 100 gram skein left. So I might, I bought, I have two skeins of this. Um, so I might have enough to make a pair of socks <laughs> left afterwards out of the other skein. But these, I really, this is Cuddle Bums yarn and I really like their yarn. It's really brightly coloured and a little bit crazy if I'm honest. I, I did a little shawlette for Emily in some minis that I bought from them and it is absolutely 100% mad in colours but here is how it looks on the skein now it is um it does have a price tag of 15 pounds i actually bought this they had um a stand at the nottingham yarn show of 2019 that was the last first and last yarn show i got to go to <laughs> which is bonkers because I really, really loved it. I want to go to more yarn shows, like physical yarn shows. I've seen lots of virtual ones advertised. But I want to go to the physical yarn shows because you have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with the dyers um, and you get to squish the yarn. <laughs> you can't squish the yarn on a virtual um, thing. So, but these I were reduced to £10 a skein. So I'm... Um, I'm liking the look of how I'm going for this in regards of maybe having enough left over once I've finished to squeeze a pair of socks out of what's left of this one. This colour is Mint Rainbow. It's a four ply fingering weight yarn. So it's a sock yarn. So it is 75-20. Um, 75 superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 5% Stellina sock because I'm not sure if you can see the sparkle in there. Look at that. It's so pretty. And so is this. I can't wait. Like, this is another thing making for Catherine. I need to make more things for Emily. I don't want Emily to feel left out. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to have a whole spate of doing things for her in her size. Two whips left. So let's go with my um, 
got I am taking part in a knit along run by Black Sheep Wools and it is um, a day out I think it's called a day out I forget now but I shall pop it somewhere up here <laughs> again oh head like a sieve today we've had a manic day at work so I don't feel that my brain is quite working to its optimum and I am very very behind I think everyone else is on square five or six now and I'm still working on square two but this is my 20 minutes of knitting in the morning so when the alarm goes off Simon gets up and gets in the shower I have 20 minutes while he's in the shower where I sit up and do a little bit of knitting so the first square is this one which I really like I've never done this sort of thing before with the twists and I am using the leftover advent calendar yarn at the moment and when that runs out I will move on to stash and this is mainly I'm using it as a scrappy blanket the whole point of me taking part in this is there's a whole bunch of knitting techniques that I've never done before and I just want to use it as a learning experience and that's what I'm going to do so the second square is mosaic knitting which I really enjoy doing it's it takes some thinking um, and concentration just because you need to know sort of where you're slipping your stitches but so it's taking longer I have to do this square had four um, to do this one's got eight <laughs> to do and I've got two finished I'm about a third of the way through one through part number three I did attempt knitting two at a time but kept I spent most of my time untangling yarn so I've gone back to knitting one at a time for these ones I might for the single color ones look at doing the same a couple at a time but I'm doing these and I'm doing these on my knit pro zing straight needles um, which I've just bought a set of and I'm really loving using that so that's that whip and then the next whip in my still Christmassy knit me saying <laughs> sock bag I have yet to treat myself to a non Christmassy sock bag but um, I do have a small bonus in my next pay packet so I might order myself a sock um, bag from one or two of the sellers on Etsy that I follow so these are my Christmas Eve box socks my toe bean socks and I showed you last time that I've got one fully finished sock I need to get some sock blockers for these to show them off properly and I have turned the heel, done the gusset and started the foot on my second sock. So here it is. Ooh. I knew that was going to happen. Ooh, extreme close up of my head there. Sorry about that. <laughs> so here is the lace for this one my lovely stitch marker which you'll see more of in a moment when I do incoming and so I've done my heel my gusset is probably I think my gusset um, my, especially my picking up the stitches along here is quite possibly one of the neatest ones I've done so far so I am I'm doing really well <laughs> Um, I definitely recommend giving sock knitting a go um, I'm enjoying it it's so much fun and well you can never really have too many socks can you so that's my socks and I'm keeping my DPN safe in my DPN holder 
from Pickle Lily. She's got one of the sellers on Etsy that I follow and I'm always, it's not going to focus with me holding, there we go. I often look and think, oh, I must buy on the next update and I never get round to it because she's got such lovely stuff. So I'll definitely see what she's got when I get paid. So that's all my whips. And uh, so I don't know when any of those are going to show back up in my decision wheel. We shall see. I'm, I had to double check that I put my lapis tunis, tunic in there because I, that hasn't come up in the almost month now that I've been using my decision wheel. I'm starting to wonder if it, it's ever going to land on that. I thought it was going to this morning. And it was going really, really slow on um, past the lapis tunic and then it just ticked in past the line into changing staircases. So I was like, no! <laughs> Not that I don't like working on changing staircases, because I do. So, my incoming, I'm going to start with my favourite incoming, which is yarn, obviously. And I sold you um, in my last podcast that um, the dyer that I buy a monthly mini subscription from had a shop update. So I had to have a look, and I didn't actually buy any of the new yarns. <laughs> I don't know I, there were so many beautiful colors I could not decide so I chose a mystery scheme she has a mystery scheme for 10 pounds and it's just potluck what you get uh, I can't remember if you even get to choose the weight that you get but it, that was potluck and oh, be still my heart this was the potluck scheme it's just wow 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 that's that's all i can say really it's it's stunningly beautiful stunningly beautiful and it's not perfect i can see areas where maybe the dye has run a little bit so it's obviously a second um but wow wow <laughs> love this this colorway is called last petal and it is a four ply fingering weight yarn and it's 425 meters to a 100 gram skein 75 percent wool 25 percent nylon and it's just just these pops of color it's it's beautiful and it goes really 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 well with the yarn that I intended to buy which is this beauty here just look that loveliness and this is nameless oh I, I should have said really the the dye is diners home of crafts there's her logo I love her logo <laughs> Um, but yeah, if you put these two together, does that or does that not shout, make me into a shawl? I think it might. So if you can have any pattern suggestions for these two skeins of yarn, do comment below or drop me an email. Um, I, I need, these need to be made into something and they are almost begging to go together <laughs> they're so beautiful because this is also um a fingering four ply weight 425 meters 75 25 so they're both stunningly beautiful yarn and i love them and i keep picking them up and striking them which is a little bit strange and i need to stop i also bought myself some stitch markers so I've bought a set of four obviously the fourth one is on my sock but here they are Let's hold it. turning around 
the little pussy cats and they're so cute oh just let's just try and put one of them there so you can see properly there he is how cute is he there are four of them and they're beautiful and i love them so much and i'm definitely becoming a little bit addicted to stitch markers because i get stitch markers with my mini scheme subscription um i have a floral subscription every other month from luxury yarns orchidine yarns and quite often there are stitch markers in there as well and she does beautiful stitch markers or at orchidine yarns um she actually calls it um what, what does she call them project jewellery I think which she uses semi precious stones and they are stunningly beautiful but um, here's the card she does have Instagram she is on Facebook um, head over to her website and have a look at all of her beautiful yarns she's very reasonably priced and I haven't yet been disappointed with any of the mini subscriptions that I've had from her so <laughs> highly recommend her that's my last bit of incoming i did buy a knitting magazine but i can't find it it's disappeared i hope i can find it there's at least two jumpers in there that i want to make for Kath emily not Catherine, emily so here is my aldi yarn bag purchase it's actually designed to be used as a yarn bucket so it's got a zip it's got this gorgeous contrast lining and the idea is you just roll down the top like that and sit your yarn in and work on it and it's got this lovely knit stitch detail on the front and it should have cost me 3.99 but it's been reduced to $1.99. So they might still have some in your local Aldi if you are UK based and you like the look of this, head over. I did get the knitting ones. They're, I do have one of these, but with knitting. And I can't remember what I've done with it. I've put it somewhere. I thought this was lovely and for two pounds, it's a steal. <laughs> There's really, it's it's sort of like a jute fabric, not jute, not jute. It's a hundred percent cotton, but I really like that. So I I might, I'm about to take part in the make along on the Sheepies Facebook group. I ordered the yarn for it last night. I'm going to be using my first ever um river washed and stone washed yarns from the sheepies so i can't wait <laughs> to get it and um feel it i also bought some our tribe to make a shawl um from one of my yarn magazines so i can't wait to use these it's all good so that's pretty much everything i think so um yeah so other than to say you know please uh, feel free to comment if you do like what you've watched if you've lasted this long um just hit the like button um consider subscribing to me um yeah those numbers are <laughs> they're not climbing as quickly as they used to but um i'm really thankful for each and every single one of my subscribers and um I consider you all my friends, <laughs> my yarny friends, my friends who yarn things and I will, um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it. Let's stop wittering on because I've had such a stressful day at work today. My orange juice, which is just sat off camera, will be very quickly replaced with a gin and tonic. So <laughs> I will wish you all good night or good morning, depending on what time of the day you're watching me and um 
happy knitting, happy crocheting, happy stitching, whatever it is you're working on and stay safe, stay well and goodbye. Thank you.